Most of my life, I've lived the oxymoron of being a working musician, which is quite a feat because playing bass is how I made ends meet as bills came in. Now, being a working bass player presented a few challenges. The biggest challenge was working with other musicians. Because, as some of you watching this video already know, there's a lot of musicians that aren't the most responsible people in the world. Another challenge that I personally had was that it seemed my life constantly revolved around Murphy's Law. Now, my livelihood depended on the adage, the show must go on. And because I was dealing with many unknown variables, which is especially true for hired gun work, I needed to take steps to secure my paycheck. So I came up with the Working Musician's Survival Bag. Now, this bag is a lot like the spare tire in your car. You may go a long time without ever needing it, but you still don't want to leave the house without it. I could tell you this much. I've broken into this bag way more than I've ever needed a spare tire. And almost every item type in this bag has been used at least once. Let's start off with the basic toolkit. The most important pieces in this toolkit are the pliers and wire cutters, which have many uses, including emergency string changes, the Allen wrenches, which are not only useful for on the fly neck and bridge saddle adjustments, but they're also useful as set pins for those beat up speaker and light stands held together by band-aids and boogers that many bands seem to have. There's also a hammer and some small nails which are useful for hanging banners. There's a bag of zip ties, as you can see this one's been broken into, which have many uses including running cords across the ceiling. There's a set of clamps, which also have many uses including elevating lights in an area that a stand won't fit or is taking up too much room. There's a couple of signal cords, an extra mic cord, and some small patch cords. You'll be surprised how many players claim to be professional musicians that show up with just the bare minimum of cords with no spares in case of failure or who forget their tangled mess of cords in a milk crate at their house. There's an extra quarter inch speaker cord and there's also an extra one with speak on connectors. There's several NEMA power cords and these probably get used the most out of my bag. There's also a small leather microphone pouch which holds an assortment of different types of connectors. This also gets used a lot. There's an extra six-way power supply with a very long extension cord, and there's also a three-way power splitter. A tip to remember is that most stages are on 20 amp or 30 amp circuits with at least two legs, bonus of more, so stay under the appropriate value when dividing power from a single source. Otherwise, you'll be tripping the breakers all night. I also have a bag of ground lift adapters, which can eliminate that annoying buzz from ground loop situations on certain stages. Now, I don't recommend lifting the ground on any high-powered piece of equipment, so do so at your own risk. There's an extra direct box, which has gotten some use by keyboard players. I pack an extra one-spot universal power supply and extra batteries. Now, I generally use active basses live, so extra batteries is always a good idea. But even if you play a passive bass, there's always a chance that Ingve Von Hendrix won't have any spares for his battery-driven pedals. Recently, I played with a vocalist who used an acoustic electric guitar, and his battery died. Guess who and whose bag came to the rescue? There's an extra microphone I donated to the bag that gets some use occasionally, which to me is like different people using a single toothbrush over time, but that's what you get for forgetting your microphone at the house. There's a couple extra USB adapters, always handy, and an extra clip-on tuner. I also carry an extra pack of bass strings, and not just for the off chance that I might break one. You see, I live in Florida, which is home of... Florida Man. And Florida's four seasons are a little bit different than the rest of the world. We have bug season, hurricane season, football season, and one long ass summer. And our humidity is pretty much like a statewide sauna. So I show up for a hired gun gig on the coast just to find out that the stage is outdoors. Now, I prefer bright new sounding strings. But between the elements coming off the ocean, the sweltering heat, and the humidity, I've had brand new strings give up their ghosts within a couple of hours. So I just keep another set on hand. There's an extra strap. There's also a box of guitar picks of assorted sizes. Now, I don't play bass with picks. I generally use my fingers where I slap. 
Often when I'm setting up on a new stage, I can usually find guitar picks scattered across the stage floor. But Murphy's Law being what it is, dumbass Ingve Von Hendrix decides to bring one pick that night, and he drops it and loses it. And it just so happens, this is the one time I can't see any guitar picks on the floor. So I have a whole box of extras. You know what else I pack? Guitar strings. Because if Ingve Von Hendrix can't afford extra guitar picks, there's a pretty high probability he doesn't have extra guitar strings in case he breaks one. And yes, I have provided guitar players with strings many times over. And it's not just guitar players. I also carry drumsticks. I remember a couple of occasions where the drummer would remember his girlfriend, but forget his stick bag. So while he sends Yoko home to go pick up his sticks, we can at least start the set on time. There's a couple of flashlights. Well, because stages are generally dark at night, something else that I pack that won't fit in the bag is a tarp. Because here in Florida, it can go from sunny to rainy in a matter of seconds. And last but not least, fingernail clippers, which I use quite a bit, especially when doing studio work. Now, some people watching this video are probably going, how come there's no gaffer's tape? Look, for myself as a working bass player, time is money. And taping down chords and pulling up tape just takes way too long. But that's just me. So that's my working musician's survival bag. If you have any extra suggestions about what to put in there, please list them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I'm Rib13. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I also have a Patreon account, and I want to give a big shout out to Derek, my first Patreon supporter. Thank you very much, Derek, and I'll see you next time.